Utah biologists confirm some mule deer in Utah have tested positive for COVID-19. Now, this is the first time, not just in Utah, but in the country, that mule deer have been detected with the disease. They've, it's been detected in white-tailed deer in other regions of the U.S. Last year, the virus was only recently, though, discovered in Utah mule deer. We want to go in-depth on this and the impact it may have. Joining us live to talk about it, Dr. Ginger Stout, the state veter uh, veterinarian. Dr. Stout, so glad to have the chance to talk with you. Uh, let's just start off with the, the significance of this. Is this something that we need to be worried about? Are mule deer um, getting sick and dropping dead from COVID? No. So, you know, similarly to whitetail, we have not seen any mule deer that have shown sickness. Um, the mule deer that we did have a positive result on actually looked like a healthy deer with a lot of fat on it. So, so far, we have no signs that that will impact the population. So was it just a standard thing? How do you even go about deciding if you're going to test a wild population for uh, COVID-19? That's a great question. So the USDA has a larger study going on that's looking into other wildlife reservoirs. And since there was such a large prevalence of white-tailed deer that tested positive, they thought, you know, the next thing to look at would be mule deer to see if they behave the same as white tail or not. Um, and since mule deer are so prevalent in the West, we thought it was a good idea to see what was going on in our populations. There are almost certainly uh, deer hunters watching us right now um, who may be wondering, does this mean that they have to worry about possibly contracting COVID from the meat that they take home? No, so there's no evidence that you can contract COVID from eating game meat. Um, there are other diseases that we do worry about. So our main take home message for hunters are use good hygiene when you process your animal. Um, so that means, you know, don't have contact between your domestic animals and the wildlife. Um, don't harvest animals that appear sick. And then just keep a clean environment around where you're processing and then wash your hands really well and clean all your equipment afterwards. And we're showing a, a list of some of those uh, rules that the hunters should be aware of that was provided um, by uh, your department there. Uh, Dr. Stout, if when you're talking about these, this being present in deer. I understand there was a deer who had the disease, so there was an active virus in the deer, but the, you found antibodies in other deer as well, is that right? Correct. So we only found one deer that was actually shedding the virus through the nasal secretions. Um, the other test that we performed was a blood test to look for antibodies that shows detection of previous exposure. Um, and we found the Delta variant in all of, in the nasal secretion that tested positive. Um, but several other deer did test positive in the blood test. Is there evidence uh, or, or is the assumption that this is pretty prevalent in our deer population and we just don't see it because it's not, the, the disease doesn't really impact them? Right now, it's hard to say. Um, the testing that we performed testing on about 280 animals. And so far it's not showing a very high prevalence rate, but we're still waiting for final confirmations from the lab. Was it, um, was it deer in a particular region? Uh, the one we found that was positive was in Morgan County. Okay, and uh, it, it, deer are a part of a larger family of animals. The, I, I think they're called ungulates. Uh, it includes elk and moose and uh, caribou for that, uh, for, you know, uh, antelope. Is, should we assume that those species are also um, susceptible in the sense that they can carry the virus or is, is assumption a, kind of a bad word in science? <laughs> At this point, assumption is probably a bad word because we, we really don't know about those other species. Uh, the USDA wanted to focus on mule deer first. Um, if we found it there, we may pursue testing in other species, but that's yet to be determined. Is there any reason to think that some of the animals that may consume deer or that may be, may be around them while they're shedding the virus would be susceptible to symptomatic COVID. Have we seen that? I, under, I know that there's some like zoo animals who have gotten COVID, but I, I don't know if any show symptoms. 
Yeah, so lions and tigers and large cats seem to be the most common that actually show symptoms. Um, and USDA is also conducting a survey of the, the zoos around the country as well. Um, so the main, the main predator that we would be concerned of would be the mountain lion. Um, but we currently haven't tested any of those. Well, it sounds like, um, in, in a sense, I mean, you've really discovered something, you and uh, your fellow workers at the department there. And I, I wonder if, uh, is this something that you are, you're looking forward to continuing the research and maybe moving to other species as well? Yeah, so understanding COVID is, you know, a complicated matter. Um, and it requires a lot of funding as well as um, time in the field and you know, cooperation between many organizations. So we'll see what happens in the future, but we are hoping to be a collaborator. That sounds great. Uh, Dr. Ginger Stout, the state veterinarian, really nice to have a chance to talk with you. Thank you for clearing up some things for us. Thank you.